Uh, next up, we have Andrea Rodolico from Nice Software talking about 3D remote visualiz visualization in HPC. So gather around, and I'll turn the time over to Andrea. Thank you very much. Hopefully you can hear me well. Um, I'm pleased to introduce you to this uh, talk. Uh, technical computing has been a very interesting environment for many years around HPC. Uh, the HPC cloud is coming, so we are going to talk about how remote 3D visualization can actually complete the picture of the HPC cloud. So for those of you that don't know me, I'm, my name is Andrea Rolico, I'm the CTO of NICE, and NICE has been a, a company that's been developing over the years self-service portal and uh, remote visualization technologies for the technical computing space. And we're an adaptive partner, of course, that is provi providing technology for, for the adaptive solutions to come to market. So what we typically see in the uh, HPC environment is that data movement is kind of needed at every step. So you need to move data to get your input into the HPC center. Uh, you need to uh, download probably even more data when the outputs come out and you need to take a look at those uh, in order to post-process them on your workstation. But then, if you need help from your colleagues, uh, you might end up having to transfer data once again so that they can also look at your same data and they can understand what's happening in your model and so on and so forth. So the idea here is, there's so much data going around, uh, is the data movement compatible with the, the productivity that you want as a user? Because the data is growing and uh, the network is not going to grow as quickly as the data is, especially if you're considering mobility and so on. So what are the problems associated with this model? The first one is the network, okay? Network is good, but uh, the data is growing faster, so it delays the user more uh, activity. We have uh, in automotive oil and gas, people wait in minutes or hours to, to get their data back from the data center where the HPC runs. Uh, cost, a web station, you buy it, and it's dedicated for the user, even if it's used in average 5 to 15%. So you're not using the best of your money uh, for, for that. And uh, in terms of IT management, you need to keep the workstation under control around uh, uh, software installation, uh, patching, uh, viruses, and everything else. And uh, it costs a lot of money to do that in a distributed fashion. The more sites you have, the more expensive it is. And uh, of course, you might have trouble also with the powered off machines and so on and so forth to ensure, uh, let's say, compliance. Workstation sizing. Every three years, you buy the workstation. And every three years, you have to bet about what is the right size for the next three years. And if you get it wrong, you will have to dodge the user that you gave the workstation to in the next uh, 18 months or so. So that's the kind of problem around uh, being consistent with the, 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 the need of the user over, over these longer provisioning cycles. Uh, and the other thing, of course, is security. You know, you, in order, when you move data, you don't know what the data will actually end up being used for. Uh, you put it on a laptop, it can be stolen. You give it to a supplier, it might you know, take inspiration. Uh, and so on and so forth. And uh, the last thing is, we have a lot of new guys coming out of college with the Facebook generation, with the iPad generation. Uh, they will not really have, you know, give the, the terminal, the SSH, a wow effect. So uh, there is expectation of, of the devices and there's expectation of mobility. So with this in mind, how can we give to the end user uh, the ability to use whatever device, uh, in, in any network condition and still be able to do all the technical computing. So the idea is to put the computing, the, the interactive application, the 3D application into the data center, into the cloud. And so this will allow you with very fast IR to the data to run your 3D application near the, the, the real models and just get pixels flowing to you remotely. So you will be able to see large models without having to download them because they stay in the data center. But then, since the pixels are produced centrally, you can kind of broadcast them if you want collaboration. So you can have more people connecting to the same session and uh, at the same time look at the same model fluidly moving in front of them. We have a beautiful demo layer that can show you exactly that, for example, with three people collaborating over different network conditions. But of course, then, you do the model, you want to run simulation, you can do that right out of your iPad or your uh, web browser and submit jobs that run in the HPC center near 
the visualization center in the same cloud, let's say, uh, and, uh, and you can get iteration between all of those. So this is what we call technical cloud, okay? It's in the together, put it together, visualization and computing. So the idea here is let's give to the end user something that is very, very easy to use. They need kind of like a cockpit to drive all this simulation, all these processes. Uh, so what, what is better than a browser, okay? When you have your, your email in the uh, internet, you need a browser to do uh, interaction, so you can do that as well with, uh, with uh, HPC. So you have, through the browser, the ability to submit jobs, to get uh, the uh, simulation outputs and uh, uh, take a look at that, read them, and uh, then if you want, you can just post-process with a click. Uh, you will trigger uh, 3D visualization on the server, no data movement. You do the post-processing, you figure out there was something wrong with the model, save a new modification, go back and resubmit your job. So very easy to uh, use, very mobile, you buy a laptop, plug it in, and you can work immediately without anything else on your client. So how, what do you need to make this happen? Uh, you need to have an architecture in which uh, you start with the traditional HPC environment. It can be, uh, of course, a, a very comprehensive uh, set of uh, uh, resources for I.O. jobs, for MPI jobs, and so on. Uh, you have, of course, MOAB around it to do the scheduling and everything related to policy management. And this HPC system typically will be attached to a very powerful storage. Such storage you want to share or, or attach also to the visualization system. The visualization systems are other kind of racks that host GPU equipped servers so that have the power to run 3D on the server to really process and visualize very complex data sets. Uh, the better the GPUs, the, the, the more performing the experience will be. So we are working extensively with NVIDIA for that. Uh, and there you can deploy your Linux and Windows application the same way you would do in a workstation by having virtual workstations over there that are using the GPU for acceleration. Then we offer that through a portal, a self-service portal, a MOAB uh, HPC uh, suite visualization edition and application portal edition are the two components that allow you to do on one side visualization and on, one, on the other side uh, uh, HPC application submission in the same, uh, uh, let's say, web environment. And uh, you can offer that with completely standard protocols to any end user. Uh, it is using standard protocols for web browsing, standard protocol for integration with uh, uh, automation tools like uh, .NET, uh, Java, or other uh, client uh, uh, application. And you use a very standard, uh, uh, very, very uh, flexible visualization protocols. Um, there's a few possible options for visualization. Um, today, uh, we are not inventing the visualization. It's been there for 15 years. Uh, there's many technologies out there, but uh, some of them are focusing, for example, on Linux, like Virtual GL. Some others, like Citrix, are working only on Windows. Uh, some allow you to do GPU sharing, like uh, uh, Virtual GL. Some others uh, uh, don't, like, for example, Citrix and, uh, uh, for example, uh, RGS from uh, HP. So uh, in order to really get the best of it, the solution that uh, Adaptive is providing, the Visualization Edition, allows you to host the multiple protocols, in particular desktop cloud visualization and RGS from HP. Uh, but uh, we have integrated uh, DCV because uh, desktop cloud visualization is the product that we have produced uh, 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 over the last few years, focusing on all the, the needs of technical computing, Linux, Windows, sharing and, uh, and, uh, uh, and collaboration, uh, GPU sharing and collaboration. And uh, we have a good demo that we've done there that we will show you in a second. So um, there are, uh, we are just announcing uh, in, uh, in this event also a new version of uh, uh, DCV. So it's uh, uh, created to uh, really address the CAD space as well. So what we're talking about is not just something that works for heavy duty computing application, uh, with their visualization, uh, uh, let's say, pre-post processor. It also works very well for CAD processing uh, so that you can consolidate your CATIA, your PTC, your uh, Siemens NX, and so on. Uh, and we also have uh, a preview release of a, a leading technology that uh, NVIDIA is producing on the market. It is called VGX, which will, uh, let's say, uh, represent their strategy for remote visualization in the market going forward. 
so um, what, what do people do with this? Um, we have customers in oil and gas, for example, uh, ENI is, is a very good example, that has deployed uh, this kind of uh, technical cloud model since five years. And so first and foremost, it's, a, it, it's there to stay, you know. Uh, it's not been a pilot, it's in production for all of 500 users worldwide. Um, what did they do is that they eliminated the need to have any workstation on the client, on the, on the desktop, uh, for any of their European users, for example, because they put all their computing and visualization in Milan centralized, and all the users has either a laptop or a thin client, and they can connect and just get their applications off, uh, off, the, wind, off the intranet. So they click on Geoprobe, they get it, they click on Petrail, they get it, they click on a, a simulation tool like Abacus, and they can submit it and control it. So such scenario was doing so well that they started replicating in different regions based on different needs. They created a hub in Houston, so hello. Uh, they had created a hub in Houston so that they can have uh, uh, the ability to um, serve uh, uh, all the Americas with the same quality of, of service. Uh, the reason for that is uh, remote visualization is influenced by the latency, so by how much the, uh, the, the, the speed of light uh, uh, carries, uh, how fast the speed of light carries your data. Uh, so by putting a hub in, uh, in the Americas, you reduce, you eliminate 100 milliseconds of wasted latency that would be the transatlantic, transatlantic uh, connection. But if you want to see how it works in transatlantic connections, in the demo here we have uh, uh, a, a few sessions that are running on the, from Europe, so you can have a feeling of uh, uh, how productive it is even running over such high distance. And then they installed uh, uh, this environment in Nigeria because of regulations, because the data about uh, oil fields cannot leave Nigeria, so they put the, the system there and they still serve uh, all the experts with this, with this environment. So um, another uh, interesting case study completely different is not around the technical uh, HPC visualization, it's about uh, uh, CAD, very simple. Northern, engineer, Northern group uh, that is here in the United States uh, needs to work with many OEMs, so for each project they need to change the whole build of the user. Different CATIA version, service pack, uh, operating system, and so on and so forth. So with this, instead of having to redeploy a workstation, they were able to go there and with one click the user could say, I want to work with Boeing, I want to work with someone else, and you get this specific build for that project ready for you without having to install anything on your, on your client. So based on these kind of successes, uh, Adaptive and NICE have built together a, 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 bundle, a bundle solution that uh, uh, is going to uh, revolutionize the way you can implement this kind of environment. It's no longer an integration work between multiple components. It's, a, 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 let's say, a very simple integrated uh, package that you can install and deploy on, uh, for example, in this case, we are announcing with the HP uh, uh, the ability to go on to market with this. Uh, and uh, you get in the bundle the visualization component, the portal for interaction with user, the scheduler and the policy engine to decide how to place uh, the different uh, remote visualization sessions on the, on the different nodes based on uh, application profiles, based on uh, the project data size and so on. Uh, and of course, uh, you get integration also with CMU in the case of uh, HP so that you can, uh, uh, let's say, optimize, uh, let's say, uh, leverage the, the information gathered by uh, by uh, the CMU component to actually give uh, optimized uh, scheduling policies and, and control of the solution. So that's that's okay. That's uh, shown here, and uh, the benefits of this approach, of course, network is no longer a bottleneck because the data actually moves from uh, uh, one server to another in the data center. It's uh, the fastest network connection you can possibly imagine for your data. So. Users will be loading data faster, will be saving data faster, will be uh, working much, much more productively. But also, there's no reason to uh, waste money because uh, you buy things that are shared. On a single server, you can have maybe 10 users, and uh, those 10 users over two years might become only two users because that server will not be good enough for uh, 10 users in two years, but still can be used uh, for two uh, uh, that will have uh, higher models. So you can really do sharing and
uh, more intelligent uh, about decisions. IT management will be very trivial because everything's in the data center. You can have templates. It's very simple to implement, uh, uh, let's say, uh, IT management policies uh, in, a, in a centralized cloud. Rotation size is not an issue. The user can literally go on the web and say, okay, I want double the memory and a better GPU. And the, the, the system can go out and provision something different. So it's going to be very easy to remodel or re reprovision the workstations and the, the visualization resources inside the, the, uh, uh, the data center. And security, of course, data stays in the data center, doesn't get out, only pixels get out. So, you know, you can take good movies, but you don't have access to the real IP, to the real uh, geometries. It's very difficult to reproduce what you could maybe look at in a, in a screen. And of course, the workforce should be quite happy because you can work with any kind of device, uh, uh, laptop or workstation or uh, uh, iPads and so on. So uh, you will see here that we can span all the way to maybe three monitors. It works very well if you have very complex applications, but it also works on, on uh, portable devices. So thank you very much for uh, listening to this presentation. For those of you that are interested in a small demo, we will walk down to the next uh, to actually, you know, play a little bit with the visualization edition. Okay, thank you.